Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to the brand new media show today. Today, I have Mr. Levi and Deborah Frazier joining the show today. Mm -hmm. Hello, guys. How are you doing? Doing well. Doing fine. well. How thank about you? you? Doing fine. Thank you. So as you know, February is the month of Black history. And the theme for, for this year, for 2022, is health and wellness. And I have lots of videos on health and wellness. I mean, you can go back and take a look at all of my videos on, on health and wellness with uh, Dr. Hiramalani Shadri. I mean, she was very informative on all the information on health and wellness. So Levi and Deborah, we're going to chat a little about Black history, and, oh, and they have a, <laughs> and a beautiful poem that they're going to recite to us today. So let's start off with uh, you guys introducing yourself. Let's start with Levi. Okay, well, thank you, Brenda. So glad to be here today. I always enjoy being on your show. So uh, I am Levi Frazier, Jr. I am the co-founder of Blue City Cultural Center. Here in Memphis, Tennessee, we will be celebrating 43 years of existence. And uh, thank you, thank you. And former associate professor at Southwest Tennessee Community College. Hey, I'm Deborah Frazier, and I am co-founder of Moon City Cultural Center. I am, I am truly a Memphian. Uh, I have been here longer than I've been in Pennsylvania. And I love Memphis, I love its history, and I am an adjunct professor, uh, instructor at Southwest Tennessee Community College. And we have learned what it means, we turned our organization, the day-to-day -day, over to our daughter, Ayanna Williams. Uh -huh. And that is just so important to us that we now help her. Uh -huh continue our legacy. Yes. And the Frazier family is a well-known, highly respected family here in, in Memphis, Tennessee, a well-known family. So let's start off uh, chatting a little about Black history. Uh, black history is a term typically used to describe the accomplishments and facts of African-Americans in the United States and remember and honor the struggles and obstacles and race has had to overcome throughout the US history. What are your thoughts when you think about black history? Well, actually we were thinking about that question a great deal and we'd like to approach it if you don't mind, don't mind from the standpoint of arts mm -hmm. and the theater, black history. Mm -hmm. And when I think about that, it's amazing. Okay. In the 1800s, as a matter of fact, around 1807, mm -hmm. uh, there was a theater company formed in New York City okay. called the African Grove Theater. And they did plays. Now you have to understand this was when most African Americans were in slavery, even on plays. And they started doing Shakespearean plays. They got okay. to be so good that the competitive white theater, the park theater, ran them out of business, burned the building down, mm. had them put in jail on trumped up charges. And so out of that theater company, a young man who was about 18 years old went over to England and started doing plays. He got to be well known, not, over, not only in England, but all around the world. His name was Ira Aldrich. So you can see how inspiring this person is. Oftentimes we think about the engineers and inventors right. and all that. But this man, especially for us theater people, he was extremely inspiring. Mm. And, and I want to bring it up to date a little bit more. Last okay. night we had an opportunity to see Little Buck do Jukin, Jukin yeah. on the stage called Memphis Jukin. And you look at it and you mm -hmm. say to yourselves, what is Black history? Mm -hmm. Well, these young people are challenging us, both young and old, both Black and white, to see that that creative spirit continues mm -hmm. and yeah. will continue. Mm -hmm. And so he said, in it, 
he wants to make sure that this dance form, it becomes as important and it is as relevant in the black community as ballet, mm -hmm. as tap, mm -hmm. as all these other dance forms because it takes on so, it, it is so physical and it mm -hmm. was so beautiful to watch young people actually we're watching history being made and it's being made in Memphis, that creative spirit and that history is, we're, we watched history last night. And so what we have to do is support it. One, That's recognize right. it, That's then right. support it as mm -hmm. much as we can. Mm -hmm. What I like to say is that Memphis is now exporting dance like it did music back in the sixties with stacks and, and high records and places like that. So continue to look for dance to be an explosive element in Memphis. I love dancing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's great for exercise and it's really good for our health also. You know, all, a lot of movement is really good for our oh, health. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So let me ask you this. What do you think mm -hmm. is the most profound moment from African-American history in the United States? Now, when I ask this question, I'll go from, from Levi and then Deborah, you intervene also. Okay, the mo mo most profound moment in African-American history. That's an excellent question because there are so many moments. I talked to one person, they said, Reconstruction. Uh -huh. and then I talked to other people and they said, oh, just coming over the Mill Passage. But I guess I'm gonna be a little conservative. Most people would probably come say the civil rights movement. The civil rights movement. And I know everybody heard of it, they know it, but that was a time when it seemed like we were able to galvanize forces mm -hmm. and come to get in a stand. And of course you can't do it without such leaders as Martin Luther King and Ward Wilkins and well even the everybody that just stepped forward. Fannie Lou Hamer, all these people, they were so committed, they were on a mission. And I, I would consider the civil rights movement, not, there's always a movement that leads up to it, but mm -hmm. I think it culminated in that. If you talk to most people today, they say, oh man, we need to get what we had back then. Oh, if we had that, we'd be, oh, we'd be so dynamic. Yeah, and, and I want to agree with that because uh -huh. I was not in the South at that time. Mm -hmm. I was actually in high school. And when that happened uh, in a small school in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. we walked out of school. And then I came to find out that there were many people in the South, the same thing. So the spirit of that movement caused many, many people to go ahead and take a stand about some things. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, it just personally, I had an opportunity to go to Penn State for four years, which most people didn't have that opportunity until then, mm -hmm. but we took it further. Mm -hmm. See, we couldn't just say, well, now I'm in school. We right. looked at the fact that in Pennsylvania, that there were 12% African-Americans in Pennsylvania, but less than 0.0% African-Americans at a state sponsored school. So we protested. Oh, we okay. protested the state and said, don't give them their money unless they have higher enrollment of African-Americans. Mm -hmm. So it was like, it, it, Levi's right, it galvanized us. Mm -hmm. What we didn't realize was the backlash. And so many students were then actually, particularly male students, as a result of what we did, were sent to Vietnam. It, mm -hmm. One small infraction. Mm -hmm. There were students that were sent to that their, their draft status changed. Okay. From school to you could now be drafted immediately. And they were. So we lived through it. We see what the results are. Uh, I don't think I would have, I don't know what I would have been. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I would have gone. But that statement. And, and my parents were afraid. They, they, they said, Dad, we think the FBI is coming to get you. I said, no, I, mean, I got to, I had to do it. But you had and to do it. You wasn't afraid. 
I, I wasn't afraid. I didn't know what it meant to be afraid. And when we see young people now and they're saying, well, and I, as a parent, as a grandparent, uh -huh. I'm saying, well, maybe you need to, to hold up. And then I had to say, well, you know, I have to stop uh -huh. because I did the same thing. You thought I, back, right. Yeah. I, and we have to encourage them uh -huh. and then help them through it and help them understand that when you make that stand, there are consequences. Mm -hmm. And we, we don't know what those consequences are. And sometimes they're negative for us. And some people are sacrificed. Mm -hmm. When we look at it, that's what happens. But as a result, we have to look at this as a movement, as a whole. How do we move as a people, as a, as, as a people who have been enslaved, okay. mm -hmm. have moved on beyond? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Let's reflect for a moment on all of the famous African-American women who come to mind. Well, let's, let's go back. I want you to reflect on a moment on all of the famous African-American women who come to your mind uh, that has struggled and that you look up to? to. Well, I'll start with this one because when Levi said Fannie Lou Hamer, when I look at all that she went through, that she was beaten, and when she, her famous, famous line, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. That's where we are now. We are sick and tired of being sick and tired, but she moved on that. And when in 1964, when the Democratic Party made up of both black and white wanted to be seated and they couldn't. And Johnson called and said he was going to do a press conference. So the speech that she was going to give would not be on air because he knew the power that this black woman's words had, uh -huh. that even though he gave that speech late, even though, and he didn't even have anything to say. He just called it and people were saying, the reporters were saying, what do you want? What is, what, what is this about? Uh -huh. And he just went on about some nonchalant thing, but then the news still recorded her speech live. And that night she talked about the fact that she had been beaten that what did it mean? And this whole idea of I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired and the power uh -huh. that she had. When you look at it and you say, sometimes, you know, I, I'll, I'll see something on television uh -huh. and I'll say, well, maybe I shouldn't. I, I look at these young black women, particularly now, uh -huh. um, Victoria Jones, who went down and protested and you, you see them and, and I don't know that we prepare particularly our young women, to be ready to not only protest, again, to look at the consequences, and three, to understand that the sacrifices that you may make may not benefit you. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I think so many times we forget that there are consequences and we can't figure those consequences out. Mm -hmm. And Fannie Lou Hamer, as a result, I mean, she people lost positions, people who were behind her. The government, well, the congressman came back and told people, and these are whites, white women who were behind Fannie Lou Hamer and this movement said, well, your husband's not gonna get that judgeship if you support uh, this group coming in. Your husband will not receive this if you continue to support Fannie Lou Hamer and this democratic uh, delegation. So, see, we don't we we don't ever know. But at the same time, we have to thank God that we're in a position to do that and to do it and to know that and trust in Him. Uh mm huh. -hmm. That's that's true. What about you, Levi? What person, a uh, woman, comes do I have to your any mind? Time do, I, <laughs> <laughs> I said, do I have any time? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can talk to your I, I can talk to your wife all night all night I can chat with her. 
actually, you, we, we've been married. We've been married forty four years this year, and of course, you wouldn't believe, but Fannie Lou Hamer was the first I was going to see. Everything we said today, I was, was going to say that. That's why I said, let me jump in on one of these. And, and I had the opportunity to, to meet her when I was in college. I went to a National Students Association convention. I oh. met her in, in uh, Fort Collins, Colorado. And I remember it just like it was yesterday. I got a chance to talk to her. At the time, I had on these psychedelic looking overalls I bought. I thought they looked good. But they you, know. <laughs> you can see me a mile you know, you're good, <laughs> anyway, she, she said, boy, what you got on? That was the first comment she made. And the rest of it was conversation about who she was and what she had done. So uh -huh. Lou Hamer. But since my wife eloquently spoke about Fannie Lou Hamer for a period of time, I will at least mention uh, Ida B. Wells. Okay. Ida B. Wells, of course, is a person that we all know of, we should all know of, who was a journalist. She had a, her own press, and she was a firebrand to fight against racism and lynching and all of that. And before uh, a person who sat on the front of the bus, uh, Miss Rosa, Rosa Parks, sorry, sorry about that. That's right. Uh huh. Rosa Parks. Ida B. Wells was thrown off of a train because she refused to sit in the back and went all the way to Supreme Court. So this woman was a dynamic individual, a way ahead of her time, way ahead of her time. She took care, if I recall correctly, of family. When her mom died, she was young. Uh -huh. And she and what we are doing, we're reaping the benefits of things that this woman did, as well as Fannie Lou Hamer. Uh -huh. So that's the person I would choose. Ida B. Wells. Okay, let's okay. So what man comes to mind from the US history who stands out to you? A man from again, so many, just like so many women. If I had to choose one person, I would probably say, hmm. And actually, I think I will go to the arts. Who is that? I will go to the arts. And, and I, I, when I go to the arts, I would have to say, um, Do you want me to speak? <laughs> no, I'm, um, let's see. I know, I know. I was trying to think the Harlem Renaissance, uh, the poet Langston Hughes. Oh, Langston Hughes. Okay, Langston yeah. Hughes. Uh -huh. Yes, I would have to say Langston Hughes. Again, I was trying to figure out some name because most of the time we got so many people we can choose this person. But when we you say some. one person, it's like, uh -oh. yes. But I, of course. So many famous African American that, that has accomplished yeah. so much. A you're right, accomplished so much. And we, we just, we give them homage by still doing their work. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Langston Hughes was a role model for a lot of artists today. Not only was he a short story writer, an essayist, he was also a poet and a playwright. Mm -hmm. And so the things that he penned, we're still using today. When you talk about um, talented and a genius in terms of writing, Mm -hmm. You have to mention Langston Hughes. Great. Okay. Love that. And I guess I would say George Washington Carver. Okay. And, we had a, and, and when I say that, see, I have three people, right? Okay. <laughs> yes, e. Washington, W.E.V. Boys, and George Washington Carver. Mm -hmm. But of those three, George Washington Carver stood out to me because our oldest son had an opportunity to matriculate at Tuskegee for two and a half years. And oh. so we visited Tuskegee so many times and I was just so impressed with what he did with so little. Uh -huh. um, when he was just a child, you know, I mean, he was orphaned, but he was an artist and the people who took him in realized that a slave could not make a living as an artist. I mean, he was a beautiful artist. Mm. And he was so in, but his area was biology. Okay. And he was so intelligent until actually he was a graduate student and 
a professor in Iowa. Mm. And George Wash, I mean, and Booker T. Washington found him and said, look, I'm starting a school in uh, Alabama called Tuskegee. You've got to come. Mm -hmm. And the school was so impressed with who he was until they gave him a microscope to take with him. Mm -hmm. And so he and Booker T. Washington were on the train and he said, okay, what does the department look like? And he looked at his microscope and said, but well, that's your department. That's what we have. Mm -hmm. That's all that they had. And he came back and he told them they would go into Tuskegee and find things. So he found an old doctor's bag. He used that bag until he died. Mm. And these were just things that he had found in the senior. And he said, God gave it to him. Mm -hmm. And they would say, yeah, no, uh-uh. I mean, you know, um, scientifically, how mm -hmm. did you find it? And he said, no, God, he said, if God can give it to me, mm -hmm. then it is science. And so they said that the chapel would be packed every Sunday night because he would have these talks okay. with people about science and about God and how God just gave him and told him to do the peanut to uh -huh. raise the peanut and how important that was. And uh -huh. he was amazing. Now to have a school where he could do this uh -huh. was so important. And sometimes people like to compare Booker T. Washington with Du Bois. But finally, in my old age, I realized, I said, you know what? Every uh -huh. one of these men were important and each gave something to us. That's that right. We did, that we needed. That's right. That's right. Good answer, guys. Good answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now, what obstacles must African American women throughout history overcome? Is that right? <laughs> well, I guess the main obstacle is uh, discrimination just according to your gender, mm -hmm. uh, just that equality. And in our community, African American women were always. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry, Levi, say that again, please. I think the Zoom frozen for a moment. But the community understand that's part of our legacy is that. Uh, a focus on family. So we didn't separate it. You're a black man, I'm a black woman. No, we're black parents raising our children together. I'm a black man, you're a black woman. No, we are black people trying to do what's best for our community and our family. So I, you know, with today's world, we get so many dichotomies, so many separations that pretty soon one person is pitted against another person and on and on and on. And so it keeps us from working together. And so my thing is. Okay. If we can come together uh -huh. and black man and black woman, the crisis joined together, then we'll see a, a really a strong movement. And, and I look at the point because I have three granddaughters and I say, oh my goodness, they, they have a hard road to toe because uh -huh. we as black women and we have so much discrimination in the fact that many times we're just not heard and you can't, you can't scream loud enough. And that, that's women in general. You know, the more you scream, then you're called other names. And so then when you work quietly, then you're um, too submissive. And so our young women and granddaughters and daughters and nieces and where there is no win. Mm -hmm. But we have to continue to strive. And as their elders, we must then teach them how to move and and sometimes to listen. I mean, my my oldest granddaughter was let go of a job because of her hair. That's discrimination. Because of her what? Um, 
because of her hair. Her hair? Her hair. Now, she was told that she did not, was not appropriate for her to have such short hair at her job. Mm. And then it was natural. So okay. they did not like that. They said that fro, we, we, don't, we don't like that afro. Now, this is 2022, what we're 20. talking about. And oh. so, you know, she called me and she said, grandma, she said, mom, what am I supposed to do? And I said, you have to, you know, at this point, and that's discrimination. That's discrimination. I said, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know where to tell you to go because one, um, you're already let go. How do you move on? What do you want to do? Do you want to fight this? Uh -huh. And she said, well, I don't know, mom. She said, actually, I got another job. I said, well, look at it like this. I, and I'm going to tell you, for me personally, uh, we have an agent. And my hair has to look straight. I, don't, I won't get a job. They want a, a specific look from us. You talk about discrimination. And sometimes I say, well, I don't want my hair to be straight. I, I, want, I want my fro. They say, well, uh, and I have to tell them when I'm going to have a fro or can I take it down? And, you know, it is, uh, so yeah. when we talk about the issues, that they, they seem minor. See, my <laughs> hair. We, that's all we have to talk about is our hair. Is our that's hair. It. I mean, that's true. Discrimination is still out there. A lot of these jobs want you to have that certain look. If you don't have that certain look, that you're not going to get the job. And that is totally wrong. That definitely need to change. Definitely need to change. You know, we as people have a long way to go. But we cannot forget the fact that we have achieved, we have achieved so yes, much. Yes, we yeah. have. And for all those beautiful moments of achievements, confidence, and success, we, we remain grateful to the almighty, you know? Yeah. And uh, let's play a game. I have a game for you guys. Are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready? Yeah. What I'm going to do, I, I'm going to put you on the spot, okay? What I'm going to do, then after this, I'm going to let you guys recite the poem. You know, I want to thank the audience for hanging on in there with us today, but I'm going to spell out the word black, B-L-A-C-K, and we're going to start off with B, and I want that word to relate to something in black history, and you tell the reason why you chose that word. Okay, so we're going to start off with the king first. We're going to start off with Levi, okay? Levi, let's start off with black, B. B, bone. We couldn't have made it if we were not bold. If we had not been bold, because we would have gotten pushed off to the side behind a rock everywhere you can imagine. And we did, but we came out swinging, we, and that's why we're still here. So uh -huh. that boldness is something that we needed and we got. That's okay, right. mine is. Black is beautiful. Beautiful, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> so many times we are told that, you know, we are not. Right. So black is beautiful. beautiful. And I believe it and I live it. All right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's go with L. Levi. Lasting. And I say lasting because we have been able to outlast a lot of situations and a lot of people. And okay. our legacy is lasting. And okay. when you look at our legacy, you see that people did not give up. And that's what we still have to have. Mm -hmm. That legacy of lasting. I will keep going no matter what. No matter lasting. what. Lasting. Okay, my L is going to be Langston Hughes. The L Langston. is Langston Hughes, a poet. <laughs> okay, Langston Hughes. 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 Okay, 
he, okay. at that time in the 1920s, during the Harlem Renaissance, he talked about the fact that, yes, uh, America is mine too. I am part of America. Don't, I claim America. America has to claim me, who okay. I am, what I am. So. Yay. Yeah. Yay. What about A? Levi. Oh. A is for a is for Africa, <laughs> where we came from. And, and we had an opportunity to go to Ghana uh, in 2020, right before the pandemic started. And um, when we got there and we put our foot, feet on the ground and we saw the people and uh, you know, I looked at it and I said, this is where I am from. I, this is my homeland. And when they talk about the generations, I mean, we're talking about a hundreds, they, they, could, they could take it so many hundreds of years of their ancestry uh -huh. that we could not. And I, sometimes I wanted to cry because I said, well, we don't have that. Our ancestry is not that long. But when I went to Africa, I said, it is, it is. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. What about you, Levi? The Almighty. Almighty. Yeah, God Himself. Mm -hmm. and so we look at the Almighty. <laughs> actually, how we got over. In the old gospel songs and my civil rights movement that I mentioned earlier was based on God. It was a godly movement. And that's why it was successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go with C. <clears throat> Whoever want to go first, C. Cooperation. Cooperation. Cooperation or unity. That's mm -hmm. what will get us over to. We have to work together. When we didn't have a whole lot, we were forced to work together. And they have to find reasons to be the business leader. That doesn't mean that um, as a business person, you can be slack just because you're depending on black folk to come through the door. Uh -huh. No, we all have to do the best we can, but we have to work together. We, we have, have to, to work together. together. Yes. Okay. My C is. <laughs> come on, Deborah. Come on, Deborah. <laughs> uh, Collaboration. Collaboration. <laughs> that Why? means that too many times um, we find ourselves that I have to do this by myself. Mm -hmm. Our organizations, okay. I've got to do this by myself. Uh, and we are learning now that each of us can bring part of that piece together in order for us to do more. Okay. So many times what has happened is we get just a little tiny bit uh -huh. and then that little tiny bit has to be divided among all of us and we fight for that when we could collaborate with our own money, with our own uh, ideas, with our own plans and bring something much bigger than anything that we could ever imagine. That's true. But we have in some ways, and I've moved through slavery, been taught that no, we don't collaborate. Uh -huh. We don't do those things together that benefit each other. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I pray to God that we all can work together one day. Yes. I pray to God that we all can work together and stop all of this jealousy and envy. And let's work together as a unity. Let's come together. Okay, let's go with K. I got K. K is knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Like that. <laughs> and uh, when we have it, it is, we, we need to understand that knowledge, you need to get wisdom. Because knowledge by in and of itself does more harm than good. Because I, I think I know, and yes, you may know some things, but you have to have some understanding and some wisdom with that. That's and funny. and as an elder, I want to have the opportunity to just not imp 
impart what it is that I know. Mm-hmm. But when I say knowledge, just a question, what's mm-hmm. the direction you want to go? Right. Where do you want to, and that's, you know, our purpose with our daughter right now, who is taking over our business. Mm-hmm. She knows a lot of stuff. And I try not to take her excitement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But what I want to do is ask her questions about, now you want to do this. Why do you want to do this? And I don't always tell her what negative things have Mm -hmm. But I do ask her to be uh, a little more questioning about some of the things that she wants to do, just so she'll discover for her what she should do. So knowledge is most, most important, but it's no good without wisdom and understanding. That's right. All right, Levi. Kay. Kay is kind. K-I-N-D. And I think it's very important that we remain kind to each other because you can actually say the wrong thing, but it's the right thing. You just say it in the wrong way. As my wife was saying, uh, talking to our daughter, Uh she can give advice, but if she decides to give it a certain way, then nine times out of 10, it won't be taken. And so we have to remember to be kind. These are fruits of the spirit. You know, we, we have kindness. Mm-hmm. And it's not sleep over being kind. There's no skin off of you, know. But That's right. if you do it, you'll find that generally people will act much better towards you in a situation you may be in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Fun, 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 guys. <laughs> so you guys going to mm-hmm. take us on home with this uh, point that you're going to recite for us. Uh, you guys get ready to mesmerize us with your beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful voices. Okay? Ready when you are. We're, we're almost ready. Okay, no problem. Take your time. And I want to apologize uh, to the audience because a lot of the Zoom is like it's, it's like freezing up and then it comes back. I have no, no control. So I apologize for that. I don't know. I don't know why that's happening. It's that unstable connection. So, but I hope it's okay. Grateful ways, always. Grateful for the smiles and for the tears. Grateful for this new day and bygone years. Grateful for this life and all that it brings. Grateful for the winters, summers, and spring. Grateful for the sun and the moonlight. Grateful for the day and night. Grateful for the bad and all the good. Grateful for hunger. Grateful for the food. Grateful for the obstructions, grateful for the flow, grateful for the soon and for the slow and the winding ways. Grateful for the sickness, grateful for the good health, grateful for energy, penury, and for every wealth, grateful for the rest and the tiring toil, grateful for the peace in all the turmoil. Grateful for the friends. For the foe. Grateful for the joys. Grateful for the sorrow. Grateful for the denials. And gra- grateful for the praise. Grateful for all I have that I have not and that I have not. Grateful for ignorance and the wisdom taught. Grateful for the more grateful. Grateful for the less. Grateful for dualities. Grateful for oneness. Grateful. Yes, grateful. Grateful is all I am. And ever shall be. For you know best. What is good for me. I shall never ask. And doubt your mystic ways. 
we, we shall stay surrendered and grateful always. Beautiful guys. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Who is the poet's name on that point? Is is that? I did not. I didn't write it at the bottom because I rewrote it so we could see it a little bit better. Yeah. Her name. Uh, his, his, his name is uh, Sadhguru, Sadhguru Shri Mad Madhusudasai. He's, he's, he's from uh, India. Yeah, from India. From India. Beautiful, beautiful. Right, sounds like it. Yeah, um, that's yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, grateful. Yeah. <laughs> Again, that's Sadhguru, Sadhguru Shri Mari Sadhguru Shri. Yes, beautiful okay. guys. Oh my God, I just love your voice always. It's just so lovely. And I want to thank the audience for tuning in. Thank you guys. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Take you. care. Thank you very much.